Hello, welcome to the webinar. Thank you guys for joining. I hope you had so far a good week. My name is Richard Jentsch. I'm with uh, Amangerbach North America. Um, and I'm here for you today to explain the differences in four axis versus five axis, the different milling strategies, the different mills, what we have to offer, hopefully clear up um, which indications require a fifth axis, when it might be beneficial to have a fifth axis. So the, the big question always is, uh, is a fifth axis uh, worth in, uh, the investment? Because of course that is additional money. Um, in my opinion, it is worth the investment just because an axis uh, cannot be upgraded, at least in, in our and, and, and no uh, cat, uh, cam machines. But I've been seen from the competition, it's an option to upgrade an axis, just too big of a thing to do. So uh, for the indications, what I'm interested in, we'll see that then in a little bit. Um, it's definitely worth it, but it depends on what the main focus, of course, is in the, in the laboratory. The, uh, there's, of course, a, the price difference. We're going to look at uh, the next couple slides here at the uh, at the indications what a four and a five x or uh, wet and dry mill can do, and uh, also I, I have the MSRP prices here in the next couple slides. Um, the overall goal is, of course, to get better results with less adjustment time and uh, five axis, not only mill, but also the five axis cam software and five axis simultaneous strategies can help you doing that. And ultimately, that's saving your time and money because you have to spend less adjustment time behind the bench. So as an overview, I'm sure you have seen what type of machines we have. Um, we have a thermal micro on the far left here, four axis, dry only. Um, great addition for uh, bread and butter work, posterior of your main focus is zirconia. And if you maybe uh, press your Emacs restorations or your lithium disilicate restorations, then uh, that would be a, a good mill in addition. The uh, micro 5X then was added to it where uh, with the fifth axis you get a bigger spectrum of indications you will see that then in that indication sheet on the, on the next slide the uh, micro ic is a wet only 4x machine will um, soon do the uh, the milling of the Konya single blocks which on your is uh, soon to be released with the solid fx multilayer starting out and then others to follow uh, in single blocks, but also in uh, a little bit larger blocks that you can nest like a three unit bridge in it. It does grinding and carving. We will have a, a more in-depth uh, look at the carving itself, what that does, what that means. And of course, our all-in flagship, the Thermal Motion 2 wet and dry hybrids, five axis machine, does milling, grinding, calving, rotational milling, dentures, you get it all. Okay, let's have a look at the uh, overview on the indications. Um, the This slide and the next slide shows you basically this is more like a overview of the axis, what it can do, uh, and, and more like a material focus. So you see on a micro, we're looking in zirconia, Cintron. Cintron is a non-precious sintered metal uh, together with our argotherm, which is sintered in a, a shielding atmosphere of argon to prevent oxidation. So it's milled in, in a wax-like uh, consistency. So it can be milled pretty fast. It mills wax itself, of course. It mills resins, uh, different types of hybrid ceramics, glass, uh, the, and the classic laboratory indications. I already mentioned that. So if you have a lot of posteriors, some smaller bridges. Uh, that's a, that's a good machine to add on to. The uh, micro with the five axis now adds splints. These would be dry mill. There's a special tool which you need in order to dry mill splints. Um, that's also a couple slides further down the road. You can see what the item number is, what the flow looks like, etc. Um, on the five axis, you can make large bridges. 
because you're usually then looking in some difficulties with the different path of insertions. Uh, not everything is prepped parallel, etc. So you might be better off with a five axis mill there. Implant bridges. So the uh, four axis would mill you a single abutment or screw retained crown, but not a implant based bridge. And uh, that's why I personally tend to recommend a five axis machine if you either right now are already making implant bridges or if you're looking in the future to do that, then you would need a five axis machine. Um, a splint also has quite some undercuts um, in order to, to uh, snap and, and stay in place. So that would be something where you want a five axis machine for sure in order to mill that out. And um, the, in general, the larger complex cases. Um, but of course, all the, the main things from the four axis. Now in the micro IC, as a four axis wet only, we're basically looking at grinding and uh, carving, but also milling. Uh, it's for single blocks only. Uh, it does the tie form rotational milling for one piece titanium, um, um, one piece titanium abutments. And of course, zirconia and, and in the future then resin. So zirconia is something which uh, is in the near future where the single blocks are being released and then resin uh, is gonna come after that. Now in the motion two, you have all those restorations with the option to get the uh, cam software out and decide for you if that is preferably in, in wet milling or uh, dry milling, et cetera or however the, the best method of, uh, of production is, you can go back and forth in between the wet and the dry and, and you get all the additional indications like dentures, et cetera, on it. So let's have a look at the more indication-based uh, slide here. I think this is a great overview to actually see which machine covers what. And you see the micro 5x is really only lacking uh, two indications that's a custom titanium abutments that means those tie forms where the screw channel is pre-made and the interface is pre-made and only the top portion is is being uh, processed with rotational milling that needs to be wet so that therefore it's not on that list and it doesn't do full dentures because that also uh, would require wet milling all the other ones are covered. So my my two favorite choices here are definitely a micro 5X and a Motion 2. The uh, Motion 2 has a little bit more versatility if it comes down to the interchangeable holder concept, but indication-wise, as you see that here, the uh, uh, micro 5X is basically second best. And then with the 4X machines, it's getting a little bit more specific into um, posterior crowns. Yes, you can do some veneers, but it eventually um, getting a little complicated. You will see that then once we have the live hands on. So looking at the micro 5X, it's very compact mill. I mentioned already dry only, very robust, robust um, built with a unibody here, full spectrum of all dry materials, gets the benefits of a fifth axis. You see the fifth axis is here, this internal part rotating. You see the uni body here, so it's a very strong built quality for that. Switching over to the micro IC, also uni body technology, but is wet only. Has the uh, updated Jaeger spindle um, with 100,000 RPMs on it and 750 watts. Uh, what we call the torpedo A-axis, which is a protruding axis. Uh, you get uh, also a good amount of flexibility due to the different holder, what can be interchanged with the machine. I think you have seen probably that spindle, same spindle, which is also in the DNA generation of the Motion 2 5X. <clears throat> you see uh, different holders. That gray one is going to be that milling holder. It's going to be very interesting for those single blocks once they're released. 
and to look at the carving we have the carving as you can now tell from explaining it carving is possible with a 4x machine you don't necessarily need a fifth axis in order to carve so both of the the mills the micro ic and the 4x wet and all the motion to wet and dry hybrid can do the carving and what it does it's basically cutting the axis off around the tooth and thereby reducing all this manual production here and bring it down from what took about 45 minutes for unit to now about 15 minutes. It's thrilling also is um, about to be released. I think in, in some uh, countries in Europe, this is already out. Um, we should get that in the US here with the next update, which is being pushed, where you can basically make a screw access hole into the unit. So one more time, milling is with a cutting edge. Grinding was those long pathways and carving is, I think, in the long run. Then replacing the grinding just because it is more efficient and makes more sense. And this is up to 60% faster. And we want to have a little bit of a focus as well on the uh, speed milling of resins and or the dry milling of resins. Um, the uh, carving, of course, I already mentioned, is available on a motion too. Already has been out, already uh, um, has been proven to work. Just as a refresher, those are the required tools of the new type of the diamonds in order to carve. And uh, they have been provided with, with a better coating, a thicker coating. Okay, so what's carving? Just to refresh, they're cutting the excess off. To see this uh, in life, really quick, a little video. This is real time on how it's cutting that excess off. So this, again, would be possible with a 4X or a 5X, but uh, Armin Gerberg has been uh, pat patenting this process. So I'm not quite sure on how, how uh, easy it would be for them, the competition to, to get to the same thing. <clears throat> okay, motion two, the all-in-one mill, basically. Um, you already probably have seen it around. It can do not only the carving, uh, but also due to the fifth axis, same like the micro 5x, it can do the, the new HD strategy, what you can see here as a selection for undercuts, what it's called. Uh, we used to only um, process the cavity with a fifth axis simultaneous in order to get two undercuts. Now you have the option to enable this here with fine or with HD on the outside. And that's up to the CAM software you're using. In our case, it's all uh, built into the, the Match 2 software. And you can just um, select it from the drop down menu and enable simultaneous on the outside. And what it does is you can see I here clearly um, touch up those areas around the CEJ on, on such uh, screw retained implant based bridges that's a very important tool to have uh, the hd basically then would use either a 0.6 or 0.3 millimeter tool that depends on the material what it's cutting so on resins um, that's a little different on on resins or polymers however uh, pmmas it's using the 0.6 millimeter tool instead of the 0.3 which will be used on zirconia and here you can see what kind of difference that is. And you can imagine how much um, bench time you're actually saving by, by choosing the correct milling strategy for the correct case. Probably would be overkill for single units to select that um, uh, undercut option to enable simultaneous 5X movements on the outside units. But uh, never say never. There's some cases 
where it might make sense to do that. Um, maybe if you have a contact point and uh, there was a little bit of cupping happening in your design and you wanted to just still mill that out correctly and then smoothen uh, around that later on after it's milled and you don't want to go back into the design, you could actually add a tilt to restoration a little bit to make this accessible uh, or you could enable that feature here with the undercuts. A demo case to show you how to prepare for HD milling on the model line. So you might already be very familiar with those uh, magenta or pink little spots on the margin line where that's due for being either overextended a little bit or for um, not having a perfect path of insertion. So that eventually sometimes happens that so you have small, small areas on the margin line where the margin line will be open due to the path of insertion and extension of it. And uh, sometimes it even happens if the narrow screen, like in this case. And what you probably already have been doing is switching over here to undercuts and then specifying a small, small area to actually cannot even see something open here. It's that tiny. And you probably have been putting a small value in here and hitting apply in order to get this closed. And then the magenta has been disappearing and you were basically all set. Now that's exactly what you have to do in order to prepare for the HD margin milling. And I show you why, if I put this back to zero, you can see here is a little bit of a shadow. I don't know how well that comes across on the, uh, on the webinar now, but if I get to the cut view, you don't have to do the cut view in order to prep it. What I've been doing, just entering a small value here that already would cut the trick. Um, you would have to make your own judgment on how big that value is. I would suggest somewhere in between 0.3 to maybe 0.5 should be sufficient there. Uh, I just wanna show you what it exactly does. So I'm gonna enable the cut view here and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and you can see how we have here a very small area where it is also having that little bit of a yellow hue to it. The margin is not completely closed. It's because or not in all areas completely closed. And that's in order to make um, the space available for that one millimeter burr, which has normally been working the margin lines. If I now go in here and I say half a millimeter as a safety zone to not change the margin line, now you see that has closed that and then only then it really makes sense to, to use the smaller tool on it, the 0.3. Don't do this though if you're not using the HD milling or if you do that not, um, without HD on the margin line, then be prepared to seat your crown a little bit, um, probably preferably with uh, a microscope. All right, so far that's it from the CAD preparation there. Let me switch over to my nesting. Uh, this is a multi-layer block. This is probably how you normally used to be seeing the multi-layer block. And you use the opportunity here to show you what the True Smile license does. True Smile license on your dongle tool is um, if you open your dongle tool, I don't like I did it searching for dongle tool or going to the sample database and then on the right hand side we have the true smile right here it's enabled on my dongle if i enable the visualize design i now also get the that was pressed it twice i get the shade also on the bridge so that's a great helper and my machine here is selected to assemble micro 4x so you can actually see I have two angles instead of just one being shown here. And if I unlock this and hold control, of course I can grab the bridge here and tilt it. That is business as, as usual. But you see already it's not tilting it um, 
maybe how you're used to it if you are working with a five axis mill. I have it more straightened out now. I could change it to protocol, get the different shades on it. And then I could lock it again. It got now minus 10 degree here because I did tilt it. And the thing though is if I hold control and want to rotate it, it's not rotating anymore. And that is because I tilted it. So now rotation um, in addition to the tilt, that doesn't work, that requires a fifth axis. And if you're using fair amount of multi-layer and if you're having smaller bridges like this in it, then eventually um, you want to consider placing the bridge first, then tilting it, and then uh, be able to still utilize the space here like I have that. Otherwise, you, you might um, spend a fair amount of, of nesting where a five axis could really help you saving some money. So I also like to call this the hidden cost of a four axis mill because eventually you have to fiddle with it a little longer until you get certain indications nested. So you're a little bit more efficient on a, on a five axis machine. So now not only the uh, nesting from of bridges here, um, and just to show you what I can do with a five axis is if I switch this over here really quick to five axis. So you get a comparison. Take a little moment here. It's taking its time today. I would have said it's Monday, but it's not. There it is. On the five axis mill, I could not only tilt it however I desire to do so in all different directions. And in all different axes, I can still also, after it's back locked, I can still rotate it. And that's, that's now the fifth axis. Okay, and that's on a four axis just wouldn't be exactly the same. And not even only on bridges. Let me uh, remove this bridge here and let me show you a molo, let's say. Duplicate one really quick. I get the advantage here of straightening that out however I desire to do. Lock the inclination and I can still now place it where I want and see now the connector would be, if I place that here, would be right on my music contact point. So maybe I don't want that. So maybe I'm gonna rotate it over, which on a four axis I couldn't do now. Switch to connectors and move my connectors away from uh, from my mesial and distal contact points. Okay, and going back over to a micro four x, you're a little bit more limited with with those and. You also see now here that we have a red minus a 20 degree angle, which is due to the fifth axis just not being present. So on a four axis, I would have to reset the inclination to zero. And then I could, because red obviously wouldn't be something you would want to do. I could try to tilt this and this is a very good example here you see I can only tilt it over this axis this is all I can do this is not just me 
pretending. I'm trying to grab it on a different place. Um, and I, I just cannot get that straightened out. So you're on the four axis, just being a little bit more limited on, on what you can do. And if you imagine this on a veneer case um, or on a anterior, it's the same thing. Eventually you can only um, tilt the restoration um, mesial to distal, but what you really want to tilt it eventually is the, the other way. You want to maybe uh, tilt it towards the vestibular or facial and the lingual. And um, of course you could uncheck this here, but again, if we're unchecking this, then, ah, come on. It doesn't like me. Here, if I start rotating it, I get a, uh, a red angle. So this is then something what the machine would be unable, a four axis machine would be unable to reach. And I still, I cannot grab this cusp and, and get this up here. Um, so there you have your difference, main differences in four axis versus five x. Um, of course, this has all to do with the path of insertion, etc. But you are a little bit more limited um, to how you how you send it over from the CAD software, what your path of insertion is, bread and butter, uh, posterior crowns, small bridges. That's all, all very good with the four axis. If it's larger restorations, if it's more complex restorations, um, if you're doing a lot of multi-layer. Then maybe a fifth axis uh, might be the better choice for you.